Okay guys, we're gonna take that same idea of vertical and horizontal alignment that we were just talking about and try to practice that with a real still life set up in front of you. So you guys can practice through this and draw from the screen right here like I'm gonna do um, along with me. Um, and, then, and then you can try this at home uh, with your own still life setups. Um, when you set up a still life, uh, try to keep it simple and I'll talk more about that um, in handouts and such, but um, it doesn't need to be anything too complex this early on. So, when we talk about vertical and horizontal alignment, uh, we already spoke a little bit about this, showed you those digital examples, um, but let me show you how it, it plays out uh, in practice, because it's a little bit different when you're actually starting things out. So when I start the drawing, um, I start like any drawing with a looser gesture. Um, now you want to map out the size of your paper too, um, and, and the size of the overall um, design of, of all the objects. So what I mean by that is I like to give myself some measuring points. So it would not be smart for me to start out and just begin with the cup and then begin, you know, from the cup I'm going to jump to the cylinder, to the apple, to the lemon. Uh, starts out great, but then, um, you know, everything may not be organized the way that I want. So I'm going to start with some measuring points. I'm going to say, okay, that handle of the cup is the furthest thing over to the left. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a mark for where I want that cup handle to be. So that that I'm pointing to is gonna be this all the way over on the left side edge. So cup handle, uh, base of the cup, roughly. Wooden block is gonna be somewhere down this way, no lower than right here, because I don't wanna trail off at the bottom of my paper. So wooden block, right corner of the wooden block, somewhere around here. So I'm gonna go no wider than this area. That means that lemon's gonna be sitting somewhere up here, and apple would be the highest point, roughly in the center of my still life, a little bit to the right of center. So this is good, everything's kind of lining up. See how I'm not drawing anything at all yet, actually? All I'm doing is building some measuring points. It's kind of like an envelope. I know this doesn't look like much at all, but I'm mapping out for myself an idea of where each object might set. Now, again, I know that looks like nothing, but check this out really quickly. What I can start to do is, okay, if I said this was gonna be roughly the handle of my mug, this is the base of the mug, mug top. Again, very, very loose to start out with. The idea is I want this to be loose and sketchy to start out, so mug. Okay, there's a little gap, and that would be where the cylinder sits back here. Cylinder is just a little taller than my mug. Apple sits on cylinder. Okay, cylinder, apple, mug. Beautiful, getting somewhere now. Um, I apologize for the super looseness of this, guys. I'm sitting in a very weird angle um, with the camera uh, plus my drawing, plus the still life, but um, I think we'll be able to knock this out. So now I'm thinking about wooden block, which comes down at a bit of an angle. So wooden block, lemon sits somewhere right here. All right, and hopefully it starts to make a little more sense some of those marks that I was making on the page. Now I know it's still super loose and light, um, but that's where I would want to be early, early on in a drawing, especially because now we're starting to have to wrangle one, two, three, four, five objects together compared to just drawing one or two objects at a time. Uh, it's a lot more difficult. Um, so keep that in mind for sure. Now, what do I mean by the vertical and horizontal alignment? Because so far all I've done are a few measuring points and then a loose gesture. That's not that different than what we've done in the past. Uh, the vertical and horizontal alignment come into play. Um, where I really want to figure out if my proportions are right. Is the lemon about the, in the right spot compared to the mug, compared to the apple? So uh, a really simple example of a, a horizontal alignment would be um, what I do when I'm looking at a still life is I hold my pencil in a horizontal line. Now I can use that pencil if I line it up over the still life. Now what I do is I stretch my arm out as far as I can. I try to gauge as straight of a horizontal as I can and I say, okay, let's look at the top of my mug top of the mug lines up almost with the top of that white cylinder. It's just a little lower. So if that idea would be if I were to draw a horizontal line on my page, that means that at the very top of the mug, which is right here, it should be just a little lower than the top of the cylinder. So that means the top of this cylinder 
and the top of that cylinder actually comes behind the apple would be right about there. So that's a good sign. Those two things are starting to line up, but I actually draw that vert or sorry, horizontal through my design. So let's do that in a couple other places. Let's say the top of the lemon. I'm gonna hold my horizontal. It cuts through the mug just below, right where that stainless steel cylinder starts around here. So top of the lemon. Okay, that doesn't look bad. So that means that my stainless steel rim should start right around here. That's good. Gives me a better idea of where my actual ellipse opening is going to sit. You know, just a rough shape, but I'm, I'm thinking about that already. So that's good. It kind of tells me how much of that ellipse I'm seeing. It's pretty skinny, just like it is out there in real life. Um, okay, another horizontal. What, what about the base of the lemon? If I hold a horizontal line through the base of the lemon, it cuts just above, maybe about a quarter of the way up that mug. See, somewhere right in here. So, quarter of the way up the mug, somewhere in here. Okay, that's telling me maybe I need to pull that lemon down just a, a little bit there. Um, see how I kind of gauge that based on where I am with the mug over here? Um, not a bad sign. Um, okay, base of the mug. If I hold a line, a vert, or sorry, horizontal, I get those mixed up all the time, guys, uh, in my head horizontal line at the bottom of the mug cuts up through somewhere in the middle of this block. So bottom of the mug. Okay, this is telling me I'm not in a bad spot, but maybe by the end of the day, I want this block to just come down a smidge lower in real life. Uh, somewhere around like here. So not a bad thing because we kind of we kind of tweaked a few of those um, a few of those horizontals already. Uh, let's look at some vertical alignments. So um, this is a good test just to see if I hold a vertical line up and use my other hand here at the edge of the mug It doesn't overlap anything. It sits all the way out there by itself. Let's check that in real life The mug if I hold a vertical up Yep, uh, it's over here to the left of all of my objects. That's good. So I'm gonna throw a straight vertical That means we have close to the right amount of space probably through here. I'm gonna eyeball that a little bit. There's just a tiny bit of space here. Okay, so that's a good good spot for where my white cylinder is coming down. Beautiful. Now, if I hold a line up on the white cylinder, a vertical line now, notice how it almost cuts through that block. It's almost exactly perfect to my wooden block. So that's a sign that my wooden block just needs to cut over a little bit wider just to kind of match up almost with the white cylinder. So that's a good check that we just did. And I can just continue this straight line up of the imaginary line of that um, white cylinder. And let's see, if I hold my straight line, it slices just a little sliver of that apple off. So that's telling me that that apple needs to poke out side of that sliver just a little bit, which it's doing, that's a good sign. Okay. Uh, let's look at the right side of the white cylinder. It slices through my lemon, not quite at the halfway point. I'd call the halfway point of the lemon right in here. So just a little left of center. If my lemon sits here on the page, left of center, we're looking right around there. That's good. That's a good sign that I'm about where I should be. <clears throat> and see how I'm kind of drawing through the object so I can see where one thing bumps against another. That's good. Um, so I've got Cylinders, apple, lemon. Uh, we already know the top of the lemon needs to be here. Let's look at the vertical lines at the edges of the lemon. So if I look at this little nub on the lemon and hold a vertical up, it slices through almost dead center on the apple. So if my apple sits somewhere around here, which it does, it's perfect. About middle of the apple is where I want my lemon to go to. Good sign, because that's where my lemon was. So that's perfect, that's a good way to check that. Um, the right edge of the lemon, if I held a vertical line there, notice how it's just outside of the corner, this front corner of my wooden block. Okay, so corner of the wooden block. Maybe my lemon just needs to be a little bit longer. So you notice how I'm using those verticals and horizontals to kind of establish my proportions. It's a huge help in the end. There's my little nub on that lemon rounds out. Um, it, it's much more accurate than just the guesswork that I was doing before maybe. And notice how slowly but surely my, my drawing is really starting to come together. Now it's still very loose, uh, it's by no means perfect, but it's, it's starting to crystallize a little bit and those shapes are, um, are organizing themselves in a much better way. 
This is a weird way to work if you're not used to this. So bear with me. I know it's strange. Okay. Um, it feels wrong to, to keep things this loose and open uh, for so long in the drawing. And I know that from experience. I'm the type of person that wants everything to look right right away. Um, so I totally get it if you guys don't, if this doesn't feel like it jives with your, your typical way of working. Um, but, uh, you know, try it out. Stick with it for a little while. Um, trust in the process. Trust me a little bit. You have to have a little faith that, that this is going to help you, and I, I really think it will. Um, okay, so once again, now we've got uh, this little wooden block knocked out pretty well. The lemon's coming into play. And it's not until this point in the drawing, when we have all of this kind of framing underneath, that we can start to clean things up a little bit. Now, keep in mind, check this out. I've just got a kneaded eraser, which I haven't used at all yet. If you don't like this framework, as long as you use a light pressure, check out how much of that I can just wash away, right? And if I really press on it, I can take all that messy stuff from before away and, and clean it up. Now, I'm a huge fan for you guys. I wanna see this. This is like, in, uh, in a math class when a teacher says show your work, this is the work, showing that you've done the work to really make sure that everything is mapped out the, the way that we want it to be. Um, so so I'm, I'm a big fan of leaving those under structure lines and that's why we have to train ourselves to keep a pretty light pressure because if you make them too dark, it gets a little crazy and hard to see. Um, oh shoot, sorry guys, I'm bumping into my own tripod here. It's a, it's a wacky setup I've got. Um, so, so if you can, you know, try to keep those light, uh, keep them in the drawing, and then the second phase would be like the clarifying phase, I guess is what I would call this, where now we're coming in and just cleaning things up a little bit, maybe making our lines a little bolder. So for those of you who start with a pretty light pencil, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, you might jump up to what I'm using now is an HB, and this is what I've used the whole time, but you can jump into an HB pencil to kind of clean up and maybe make your lines a little bit bolder. Notice I'm looking into cast shadows. Now I'm not actually shading yet, but I'm showing where that deep shadow shape is. It's kind of like an oval shape on the floor um, or on the ground. Uh, you might even show where a shadow falls away from an object like this wooden block. I'm gonna look into the back line of the table. So where the table and wall kind of meet, there's a horizon line back there. And if I hold my pencil, it slices through the cap of that white cylinder and right in that stainless steel area of the mug. So this is my stainless steel metallic part of the mug. So we're looking like right in here. And notice how I just kind of draw through the objects. Um, this is the time of the drawing where you can do that, uh, where things are still loose and light. Okay, and again, if you get a little messy, like I did right there, a little washing away with the eraser maybe. Okay, so now I'm gonna clarify a little bit more. This would be the lid of my cylinder, a little jar there. And there's labels on that, but you know, we'll get to that down the road. The apple sits right on top of that lid, somewhere around here. but not least would be our little coffee cup here. I did a uh, little bit of a no-no, which, um, oh well, building in some mistakes here. Everybody makes them, so uh, get used to it. Um, but if I were criticizing any of your drawings, you know, if we had a critique or something like that of this drawing, 
The thing that I would say is a big no-no uh, is that this handle, I just barely didn't give myself enough room for that handle. So it makes for a weird, awkward spot where the handle is just running off the edge of the page. And that's just a mistake on my part where I didn't measure quite um, long enough and well enough to really make sure that I had enough room over there. Now this is just an exercise for us, right? A little demonstration. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of uh, leeway here and then won't be too hard on myself. But it's something to consider that you wanna keep getting better and better of that layout and design of your page for sure. And we'll talk about that more down the road. Don't wanna end up with too much empty space or uh, on the flip side, um, you know, too crammed in where your objects are starting to roll off the edge of the page. All right, guys, so um, you can see the armature and the framework of all of those structural lines still here in this image. Uh, but what has changed drastically now is that I've cleaned it up and I've used that structure to make the drawing more accurate and to, to clean those lines up. So that shows you those kind of two big first stages of the drawing, which would be the gestural loose beginning where you're really measuring everything out. Um, and if we talk about general to specific, that's the general stage. And this is just getting into the clarifying stage where we get a little more specific beyond that. Um, keep in mind that mine's still very, very loose. Um, I'm actually gonna zoom in just a little bit. Um, you can see my lines are still quick on the loose side and sketchy, um, and that's okay at this stage of the drawing. Um, we'll talk more about even tidying up uh, more so than this and, and really cleaning the lines up when we get into a more specific and contour type of a line work.